Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Let's look at this rational function integral. So you look at this rational function here, what we can do usually is that we can do a partial fraction decomposition on this rational function so that we can decompose it into a partial fraction so that we may be able to integrate each partial fraction directly. Okay, so now what we are going to do first is to write down the form of the decomposition. So the form for the decomposition is that we are going to be getting, well, let's write down this function here first. Okay, so we are getting 9x squared plus 6x plus 2. Okay, and then in the denominator, we are going to be copying down all the factors, right? So we are going to be getting 2x minus 3 and then times x plus 1 squared. Okay, so what happens is that for um, the linear factor 2x minus 3, we are going to put just a single constant in the numerator. So we can put an a. And then in the denominator, we are just going to put that, right? So 2x minus 3, and then now plus. And then you may say, what about the this one? That's a quadratic, right? We can actually treat it as a linear factor that's repeated. So that's x plus 1 times another linear factor of x plus 1. So in this case, what we need to do is that we are going to start from the lowest power for the for this power uh, for this factor. So x plus 1 and then the lowest power that we are getting is the first power. So the lowest um, non-zero power integer powers would be x plus 1. So we put a b on top of that. And then we actually need to start going up. So we are going to go up to, we are going to be going up to, um, what is that? That's going to be x plus 1. And then square. Okay, and then we stop there because we already hit the highest power. Um, so if that's a three here, then you actually need to write one more partial fraction that's having a denominator of x plus one to the third power. Okay, and so on. Okay, so now that's the form for the decomposition. And so what do we do now? We can write down the least common denominator for um, for this equation right, which is actually just the 2x minus 3, and then you need to take the highest power for that x plus 1 factor, in this case would be the second power. And so all we need to do is to multiply both sides of the equation, actually each turn of the equation by the LCD, then we can actually, uh, we are really just focusing on the numerator. Or you can think of it this way, you are getting the common denominator for all three fractions and try to add them together. And so what happens is that you are going to be multiplying the top and the bottom of each fraction by whatever that's missing. Okay, so for example, if you have 2x minus 3, then because the LCD is 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 quantity square, so all we need to multiply is the x plus 1 square because we already have the 2x minus 3, okay? So, um, but the simpler way is to get rid of all the denominators right here just to multiply by the LCD. And if you multiply the left side of the equation by this expression right here, see that everything will get canceled at the bottom with this denominator here. So you're left with just the numerator. So we are getting 9x squared plus 6x and then plus two, and that's equal to. Okay, so now take this fraction and then multiply by this LCD here. 2x minus three will get canceled because one at the top, one at the bottom, they will get canceled. And then you are left with just the x plus one quantity squared. And then don't forget the a, right? So we have the a here and then x plus one square. Okay, let's continue. Plus, um, there was a b here. And then because we already have one factor of the x plus 1, because there are two, so we need one more. And then we also need the 2x minus 3. So we are left with the b times the 2, 2x minus 3, and then also the x plus 1. And then plus c. C times what? We have the x plus 1 quantity square. We have the whole factor right here. What we need is really just the 2x minus 3. So we are going to be putting the 2x minus 3 here. Okay, so now all we need to do is to um, 
solve for a, b, and c, right? I mean, we are just finding a, b, and c for all x values, right? Okay, so now what do we do? Um, we can use we can use a strategy, right? Um, one way to do it is to multiply rating out and then try to match the coefficients. Another way to do it is to plug in some x values so that some turns will disappear. For example, if we plug in um, 3 over 2, if you plug in 3 over 2, then this term will disappear. This term will also disappear because the 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 when x is equal to 3 over 2. So only this term is left. Okay, so now we can try that. So we are going to let x be 3 over 2. Okay, and then what happens now? Um, this one we need to do some calculations. So we it would it's just going to look like 9 times x squared plus 6 times 3 over 2 and then plus 2 is equal to which is the a the, the term with the a is going to stay but the other two terms will disappear so we are actually getting something plus one to the second power so that three over two three over two three over two here um when it gets way too messy it will probably be easier to um, multiply rating out and try to match the coefficients because um, the fraction calculation is not um, not nice right so maybe the other way will be easier but anyway let's just do the calculation score the three we get nine nine times nine is 81 right 81 over four so we get 81 over four plus now six times three over two we are actually getting nine and then plus two and that's equal to what about this side right here this is 3 over 2 plus 2 over 2, that's 5 over 2, and then you square it, you are going to get 25 over 4. And then there was an A. Okay, so if you add all those numbers together on this side here, it's going to be 125 over uh, 4, and that's equal to 25 over 4. Okay, and so now it becomes really simple what A is equal to. A is equal to 5. So now next. Next is that we are going to plug in a different number. Um, this time we are going to plug in negative one. And then why do we plug in negative one? Because um, this term will disappear. This term with the x plus one factor will disappear. So we are left with the c term. Okay. So if we do that, then we are going to be getting nine times something square plus six times blank plus two is equal to now the c turn is the only turn that's left we have two times some stuff minus three and so all those blanks are to are to fill in the negative one right so we are going to do the calculation here we get nine minus six plus two is equal to um, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 3, negative 5. Negative 5c. So 9 minus 6 plus 2, that's 5, right? So c becomes obvious. It's negative 1. Then now one more. Now one more. Um... Then at this point, there are no numbers that you can plug into x to make uh, at least two turns will go go away, right? And so in this case, what we can do is that we can just choose some convenient values that we plug in, right? So what I would do is that I'm going to plug in zero for the ease of the calculation. You can actually plug in some other values like one thousand for the x, but you are not going to do that, right? Because it's going to make the calculation more tedious. So you're plugging the zero, then this turn is going to disappear, that's going to disappear, and then there was only the two left on the left side of the equation. Now, what about the right side? Plugging zero here, you are just going to get zero plus one, that's one squared, that's still one, so you just get the a. So you get the a here, and then plus... If you plug in 0 here, that's negative 3. Plug in 0 here, you get 1. So it's going to be negative 3b. 
And then plane zero here, it's going to be negative three C. Now, because we already figure out A and C, so all we need to do is to plug in the A and the C into this equation, and then we can solve for B. So that's still quite simple. So we have two is equal to A, A is five, minus three B, and then plus three, because we plug in the negative one for the C. So now we are going to be getting two equals eight minus three B. So negative three B is equal to negative six. So B is two. Okay, so once we have the ABCs, we can actually start doing the final integration, right? Okay, so right now let's just copy down the original integral, the original integral. It's just that. Okay, and that's decomposed into three integrals here. The a is over the 2x minus 3. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to put it in the same color as we used before. So 5, right? 2x minus 3. And then now the second integral. Second integral is from the B, right? So what do we get at the bottom? It's going to be just x plus 1. And then the last integral, it's going to be negative 1 on top. Then we have x plus 1, quantity square, and then dx. OK, so now let's start doing the integration here. Um, if you want, you can actually factor the numbers on the outside, but it's unnecessary here. All we need to do is to just start integrating. Um, that's a linear expression. That's a linear expression. So we are going to get the ln function. So we have 5 times, now I'll leave it blank. Leave a blank right here, okay? And then ln of 2x minus 3. And then we need to reverse the chain rule, so we need to multiply by 1 over 2. Because when you differentiate this function, you are going to multiply by extra factor of 2 due to the 2x. So we need to reverse that, so we are going to get the 1 half right here. Let's continue. So we are going to get the plus 2 times, well, it's going to be ln of x plus 1, OK? And then this one, we need to think a little bit more. Um, regarding this one, because that's not really a linear expression for the denominator, so what really happens, OK, what really happens is that this whole thing is actually being written as the integral of negative 1 times x plus 1 to the negative second power, OK? So in this case, we got to use the power rule. We got to reverse the power rule. The negative 1 in the front is just the constant, right? So you can put minus 1 here, OK? Minus 1, and then times. Now, you got to leave a blank right here, just like what we were doing here, because we're reversing the power rule. And then, then we have what? x plus 1 to what? Now, you gotta add, um, you got to add 1 to this negative 2. So we are going to be getting negative 1, right? And then we need to multiply by the reciprocal of this power here, the new power here. So it's going to be, what is that? That's still going to be negative 1. Reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1, OK? And then plus the constant k. I don't use c here because we already have a c. So there is the variable conflict if you use the, use the c here. So we are going to just use k as the constant integration. Now let's just clean up the answer, and then we get the final answer. We have 5 over 2 ln of 2x minus 3 
plus 2 times ln of x plus 1, and then plus, and then 1 over x plus 1. Um, why do we have a uh, addition here? It's really because we have a negative 1 times negative 1, so we get positive, and then plus k. And then we're finished with the problem. Okay, so now the whole process looks like that, but they're mostly just algebra stuff. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos to others. It will give me support to make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video.